oh, gee, I'm going to give you as much as respect, but you're not going to talk to me like a little kid. And it just happened. When we, of course, talk about gun incidents in the NBA, John Moran and Gilbert Arenas instantly come to mind. One shot off a gun at a strip club just days after being accused of threatening a 17-year-old, while the other decided to bring weapons to a locker room and almost do a whole shootout. However, what if I told you that there's actually another gun incident that almost took place in the NBA? It involves Hall of Fame porn guard Gary Payton, and what he was close to doing almost cost his entire superstar career. With that in mind, here's the story of Gary Payton threatening to shoot his Sonics team Ricky Pierce. Let's get into it. It was the 1994 playoffs and the Seattle Supersonics were set to face off the Denver Nuggets in the first round. Mind you, the Sonics had just came off an outstanding regular season in which they earned a 63-19 and record. They were led by superstar at the time Sean Kemp and a 26-year-old Gary Payton who was about to enter his prime. Not only that, but the team also had a great supporting cast with guys like Deadless Schrempf, Kendall Gill, Sam Perkins, and Ricky Pierce averaging double figures. Overall, the Sonics were at their peak in 1994 and were heavily favored to win the title that year. On the other hand, the Denver Nuggets had just came off a pretty mediocre year in which they ended up 20th in offensive rating. However, Mutombo's averages of 4.1 blocks and Abdul Ra'u's 18 points per game were enough to give Denver some much needed wins and sneak into the playoffs. Now it was time for game 1 to officially take place. Remember, Denver really had no expectations to go far in this series, which led to Seattle destroying them in just the first game. In fact, the final score was 106-82, to with the big 3 of Sean Kemp, Gary Payton, and Deadlip Shrem combining for 56 total points. Overall, things were looking great for Seattle, and it rightfully translated to game 2. The team was clicking on all cylinders, and once again, Kemp was playing at his best. However, during the second quarter, something pretty weird happened. You see, Gary Payton Payton was the team's best playmaker and he was expected to feed his teammates appropriately. Even though he did just that throughout game 1, Ricky Pierce thought otherwise. After seeing his touches decline in the second quarter of game 2, he blamed Gary Payton for quote unquote ball hogging and for not passing him the ball. As a result, Pierce got greedy during the next play. After Payton demanded for Pierce to pass him the ball so he can run the offense, he ignored the request and instead went one on one against another player. Now the funny thing about this is that Pierce actually fumbled the ball and got stripped which led to a Denver transition bucket. Therefore, knowing that the team's lead was slowly going away, Payton got extremely heated at Pierce. He believed that he was being really selfish and acting like a little kid. As a result, Payton forced head coach George Carl to sub Pierce out of the game to finish the half. This of course angered Pierce, which led to an extreme argument after the half was over. On their way to the locker room, Pierce mentioned how he had a gun in his bag and that he was willing to use it if Payton get disrespecting his name. Now you can pretty much see where things are heading and while well, Payton took real offense to this statement. In fact, he responded to Pierce by threatening to kill him and his whole family with a gun. Yeah, that actually happened and Coach Carl had this to say, quote, I didn't see the first outbreak but he and Ricky Pierce got in some kind of discussion at halftime and they were threatening to get guns. The players told me that they had guns in their bags. It was, I'll c your family, it was crazy. However, that right there was just the beginning of this argument. In fact, Gary Payton took things even further and threatened to hire a hitman to kill Pierce in practice. Thankfully though, he backed up last second knowing that his NBA career would have been over. I was a hothead. You know, I was, you know, I'm from Oakland. I got guys with me everywhere I go. You know what I'm saying? So it was one of the things where I had to back off myself before I got us before I got in trouble. Because if I called and make the call and, and say get it done, they were gonna do it. You know what I'm saying? And get him and practice or whatever. And then that would have been something that would have ended my career. NBA, they don't really play that gun over there. And they don't. And we had David Stern, who was really, really strict. Yeah. You know, he wasn't having that. And I had to think about it, man. Do you want to jack off your dream that you wanted to do to just to be tough? And that tough stuff wasn't really, really what's happening. I can do it, you know, long as he didn't put his hands on me or anything, I was fine with it. Damn, this man Peyton really did not play around back then, but I'm glad that he backed up from this situation. He would have probably been in jail if his request came true, would have never played MJ in the finals, and would have never won that ring with Miami in 06. Anyways, going back to this Ricky Pierce incident, things got ugly for the Sonics going forward. Even though they still won game 2 by 10 points, the chemistry suffered. Peyton became passive, Pierce started throwing horrible contested shots, and Mutombo started locking down Sean Kemp. Ironically though, Payton saw this coming. Quote, nobody was ready to play. 
We just blew up. Everything started jumping off after game 2. When we were up 2-0, everybody was acting like we were down 0-2. Everybody around the team was like that. Everybody. They were like, what's wrong with us? As you see, things were not looking good for Seattle and it's crazy that before this incident, they were looking like the potential NBA champions. Anyway, Seattle also lost game 4 by a dozen, which actually led to a fight between Peyton and his own coach, George Carl. Quote, so we settled the situation down and we worked it out and bam, we come back and lose game 4 and it's like a war. It's like Peyton's taking me on and I'm ready to go after him, Sam Perkins is ready to go after him, and Gerg is holding everybody back. It's a war zone. Players and coaches don't do this. I've fought players before, but those were guys that should be fought, but not your best player. You never take on your best player. Now, after this turn of events, it was clear that Seattle was mentally out of the series, which led to Denver winning the whole thing in game 5. Yeah, the same Seattle team that was expected to win a ring lost 3 straight games to the 8th seed Nuggets. With that in mind, the Sonics had a lot of changes to make this offseason. They obviously had to get rid of either Peyton or Pierce and improve some depth off the bench. As a result, the owner obviously traded Pierce instead of Peyton to the Golden State Warriors for a solid 3-point shooter and also ended up signing Bill Cartwright in free agency. Now the team was set for a new year with Peyton and Cam expected to bounce back and man they did so. Peyton ended up having the best year of his career averaging 21 points, 7 assists, and 3 steals. On the other hand, Cam also averaged about 20 points per game on 55% from the field. Overall, there was finally a clean environment in Seattle and the team ended up with a record of 57 and 25. However, they lost once again in the first round to the Lakers which created some panic within the organization. Nevertheless, after making some small adjustments in the offseason and seeing guys make strides, the Sonics ended up making the finals the following year and became legitimate contenders in the West. Really wonder how things would have looked if Peyton had done what he requested to Pierce. And that pretty much concludes this video. What do you guys think of this incident? Do you think the Sonics could have been contenders without Gary Payton on the team? Let me your thoughts down in the comment section below. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And turn on those notices so you know when I upload any banger. I hope everyone has a great day. Peace out.